I know, I'm a little late to the Moon Knight game, but at the point I was like, yeah, I can go for watching Moon Knight episodes, you know, episode to episode, and maybe do videos about it. I was like, I'll just do a video about episodes one and two, and then go from there. And as for this video sponsor, really fun one, this video is brought to you by Displate. Displate offers high quality prints on metal with millions of options on their website. We're talking comics, anime, movies, video games. That's right, Chrono Trigger and Night Trap. I'm Jeremy, welcome to my channel. And displaying them is really easy. Just wipe down the wall, stick the magnet, and the print hangs right there. And if you ever run into that moment like, wait a minute, I didn't hang Night Trap. Changing out your displays is as easy as sticking a magnet to your fridge. So click the link in the description, get yourself 26% off of one or two prints, or 36% off of three or more prints. That is a limited time offer, so I do encourage you to check it out quickly. And thank you once again to Displate for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. And now that character I got for free in Marvel Heroes, but never really played as, because I didn't know much about him. Well, now he has a new show. And I gotta say, in parts, Moon Knight feels like it could be something special. Now, on the other hand, it, when it becomes subpar CGI in terms of the MCU, well, it is that too. But I'm actually glad I watched the first two episodes of Moon Knight back to back. In the first episode of Moon Knight, you have Oscar Isaac, and he plays uh, Steven, adding another Steven to the MCU roster. <laughs> Marvel loves their Steves and Stevens. Steven's a charmingly befuddled fellow who works in the gift shop of a museum, he really loves Egyptian culture, but which ancient Egyptian history, it's one of the things that's drawn me to this show, because I love it too. I mean, the Warhammer armies I rock have some connective tissue with something that reminds me of ancient Egypt. But anyhow, he seems like a nice guy, but then he'll black out and he'll lose time. He'll either wake up in his bed or he'll wake up and a bunch of people around him are just dead or unconscious. Like, he'll do this thing like, <laughs> oh! Huh, I mean, his fists are all bloody, his people are just laid out. I mean, granted, there are people who are gonna cause him problems, so they deserved it. But I love that first episode because he doesn't really become Moon Knight that you see until the very end of the episode. The outfit is actually really sweet looking. But I love the weird psychological, almost horror element they were playing up. I mean, it's never as dark as it could be, but I really liked this new flavor they were throwing into it because the entire first episode was all why is he losing time? What's going on? I felt lost in a really good way. Ethan Hawke's like this dude starting a cult, which <laughs> I see he's copied my hair. Because like all the elements were there for me to be like, this is, this is gripping me. And if for nothing else, I watched the first episode of Moon Knight last night because I had to, I was like, all right, I should watch this before the second episode comes out so I can do a video on the first two episodes. But it's not that I didn't want to watch Moon Knight. I just didn't want to watch anything at that time because I was really tired, but I was like, it needs to happen now. So I played it 15 minutes in, I was hooked. I didn't want the episode to end. And that there is the mark of something that I think is truly special and gripping. And now I enter the second episode. I think the second episode answered too many questions too quickly. Now that it's bad, I'm just, I know who Ethan Hawke is or at least who he was. It's like he was Moon Knight before Oscar Isaac was Moon Knight. It's kind of like Black Adam and Shazam. He's the Black Adam. Apparently Steven, who is actually Mark, this, <laughs> this voice inside Oscar Isaac's head, who is Oscar Isaac, but it's like American Oscar Isaac and Steven's British Oscar Isaac. Apparently Mark has a wife out there, hasn't seen her for months, but she knows all about him being Moon Knight. And so it's like this whole, I run into the chicken and the egg scenario. Where it's like, who was first? Is Steven the actual person? And Mark is this other personality, this other spirit, this other person who is inhabiting his body? Or is Mark the original person who had the Oscar Isaac body and Steven's this complete fabrication who thinks he's been around for what would it be 40 years i mean he has memories of his mom he has memories of a past there was a part of me that was like how would steven have social security numbers because he obviously has a job like how could he get a job if he just appeared out of nowhere but mark moon knight oscar isaac being this super special ops guy with fake passports i imagine he could get that done paperwork wise so that's the most intriguing part about this whole thing and i actually could have gone for another whole episode of steven trying to figure it out and not really knowing maybe he gets remnants but like he and mark actually have a conversation about what's going on now i pulled the veil back a bit more than i wanted but i'm still interested and intrigued with the premise there is an element of venom in here though it's like when this egyptian god monster's talking to him it's just in his head and it usually says things that venom would say like in the movie venom you know it's just like punch his throat to eat his face i don't think he says eat his face but definitely punch his throat or it was like crush his trachea i wonder how the mcu reconciles this though because eternals was a thing where oh these gods are actually these eternals these characters who 
aren't gods. They're, they're kind of like gods. They're superheroes, but they're really old. And so human beings on Earth were like, oh, obviously they're gods. But that's for certain mythologies. I guess in other mythologies, like Egyptian mythology, gods are real. Now it's the time for Jim Caviezel to come into the MCU, just plop down, just BAM! Has a spear, you know, his loincloth. His Jesus abs. Come on, you want it. I did like how they had that Moon Knight suit that's actually, you know, a suit. <laughs> it's, it's in this episode, but they kind of scoff at it. When he's fighting, you know, the invisible dog, when he's fighting Vince Clortho, it's never as interesting as the psychological thriller element of Oscar Isaac trying to figure out why he's blacking out, why he's losing time, why people are dying around him. I feel like I might know too much, and now that this shift has happened, where Mark is now in control, it's, we're just gonna see Moon Knight play out, possibly. I hope it doesn't lose that interesting and intriguing steam that the first couple episodes actually had for me. But also, yeah, like, the Jackal dog CGI is... Eh. It was funny, because you look at WandaVision and Loki, that was MCU cinema quality CGI, just in a show. It's like they were like, no, 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 we're not giving Moon Knight that whole budget. Are you kidding me? We know how people like Wanda and love Loki, and this is... We have the data. A lot of people had Moon Knight and Marvel Heroes didn't play as him. I blame myself. I see elements of the MCU elevating itself to something else. Something more with Moon Knight in the first episode especially. The best compliment I can give the show is I actually regret not playing as Moon Knight when I had Moon Knight for free in Marvel Heroes. Now there's no Marvel Heroes, which is a crime against gaming. Not as much as the Gran Turismo 7 microtransactions, but a crime nonetheless. Where's the first two episodes of Moon Knight? Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>